Well, the acquittal of George Zimmerman in the shooting death of Trayvon Martin has sparked shock and outrage across the country. Here in California, there have been protests throughout the week, with some in Oakland turning violent. Earlier today, I spoke with Eva Patterson, president of the Equal Justice Society, about the impact of the verdict and the response. President Obama spoke about it this morning. I think it's important to recognize that um, the African American community is looking at this issue through uh, a set of experiences and a, and a history that uh, that doesn't go away. Eva Patterson, welcome to the program. Thank you for having me. First, I'd like to ask you about uh, President Obama's surprise news conference today, speaking about Trayvon Martin. Did he hit the right tone and all the right points, or was it too little too late? I was thrilled with his comments because I thought it was very important for a black man of his stature to talk about the fact that what happened to Trayvon Martin has happened to him. Black people, we often get followed around in stores, we're often put in the bad part of restaurants, we can't get cabs, and I think uh, Trayvon Martin's situation was emblematic of how we're not always viewed as full human beings. So for the most powerful man on the planet to get up and say, this happened to me, I think may have helped explain to certain people what happened with Trayvon Martin. The only thing I was a little disappointed about, and I was 99% delighted, was his hedging on whether or not the Department of Justice could file criminal charges against Zimmerman. There's the Matthew Shepard, James Byrd Hate Crimes Act that can be invoked when a state court prosecution does not really deal with people's civil rights. He seemed to be downplaying the ability of the Department of Justice to get involved. Maybe that's because they've already determined they're not going to file charges and he didn't want to get our hopes up. But aside from that, I thought it was a home run. And if charges, if federal charges are not filed, mm -hmm. Um, what does that say about our criminal justice system? Well, I'm a civil rights lawyer, and I think criminal charges probably should be filed. But if they're not, it means that a state like Florida, and remember, they took black people off the rolls in 2000, which led to the uh, stolen election. Um, they've done all kinds of horrible things, changing voting laws to make it more difficult for people, black people to vote in 2012. If they get away with this, uh, a, a decision that many people feel was a great injustice, it just makes I was going to say black people, but I think it's all people of goodwill, just feel very disappointed in the criminal justice system. Trayvon Martin should not be dead. George Zimmerman should have stayed in his car. George Zimmerman is free and has a gun. There's another woman in Florida named Marissa Alexander who fired a shot into the air because her husband was abusing her. She was nailed um, and has, has been given 20 years in jail. George Zimmerman walks free for the same mm -hmm. stand your ground type situation. So it just reinforces the notion that black people do not really get justice in this system. Are you saying then that, that, that racial bias is inherent in the racial justice system, in the criminal justice system? My organization, the Equal Justice Society, has done a lot of work on racial bias. We all have it. We all have unexamined biases and stereotypes. There's a horrible case called McCleskey versus Kemp, which challenged the racial bias in the imposition of the death penalty. If you killed a white person, your chances of getting the death penalty were something like 16 times more than if you killed a black person. Justice Powell, who said, uh, who basically let Mr. McCleskey die, said there's bias in every aspect of the the criminal justice system, where do we start? It's well known, for example, let's say a white kid is riding around joyriding. Um, he may be sent home after the police stop him. A black kid will more than likely be sent to juvie. Black kids are often charged as adults. White kids are charged as juveniles. You see the over-incarceration of people of color. Um, so yes, I believe there is racial bias, not just in the criminal justice system, but in every aspect of society. You can't have a system that had slavery, that has had biases against Asian American immigrants and Latinos. You can't have a system that's allowed that to happen without seeing bias reflected in all aspects of our society. What I found interesting in the Zimmerman trial is that they did not talk about racial profiling. They did not use the stand your ground law. Um, what they really talked about was that George Zimmerman had reason to fear for his life because there had been a number of crimes committed by African Americans in the area and therefore when he saw Trayvon Martin he had good reason to fear for his life. What is the message inherent in that? 
it's so racially biased as to be laughable. Am I to look at every kind of strange white man and think he's going to have a gun and mow down six-year-olds or mow down people in a the theater just because there have been some deranged white men who do that? Of course not. Yet society feels more comfortable making that generalization about black men. Trayvon Martin had Skittles and iced tea. He was walking to his father's home. George Zimmerman was told to stay in his car. He had various notions about what a young black man was doing in his neighborhood. I think despite the fact that the um, prosecution and the judge did not allow, I think the judge did not allow racial bias to be raised, the defense played to racial biases. They showed that picture of Trayvon Martin bare-chested. They talked about the fact that there had been young black men uh, burglarizing homes. And I, there's something in social science called priming people. Mm -hmm. And when you talk in these ways about gays and lesbians, Latinos, Asian Americans, blacks, it primes negative reactions. So the defense primed the jury to think, well, George Zimmerman saw this black man. He was totally within his rights to think this black man was going to rob somebody in that complex he was walking home with skittles so so the criminal justice system has racial bias inherent in it according to what you're saying where do we go from here how do we move this forward and rectify that my organization convened a mind science conference in Chicago in April, and we had leading social scientists there, including a UCLA professor named Philip Goff, who's been working with police departments around the country to help them identify their biases. You have this shooter bias where if a black man holds up a, a wallet, it's seen as a gun, and he's mowed down. If a white man holds up a gun, people, excuse me, a wallet, they think it's a wallet, and he walks away. So he's been trying to train police in how to examine and their biases. There also are uh, social scientists around the country working on debiasing. It used to be if you could show people who had biases against black people a picture of Colin Powell and of Tiger Woods, their biases would go down for 72 hours and then they come back. Huh. There's new cutting edge research that seems to be able to get the biases down for several months. We'll be working with the social scientists and hopefully can present this information broadly in society. We all have biases. You and I have biases. It's the way of the world, but we want to make sure that these biases don't result in a young boy, child, walking to his dad's house, getting misidentified as a potential criminal, shot and killed, and the man who murdered him walks free with his gun, whereas a black woman who shoots in the air is in jail for 20 years. That's just wrong. Oh, very interesting. Certainly a tragic case, but it has sparked a national conversation and a conversation that we, we really do need to have. Absolutely. Eva and, Patterson. And personally with each other. I think of, um, yes. President Obama was right. It shouldn't be politicians, but you and I should have the conversation, have the conversation with friends. As my friend Angela Blackwell said, it's going to be uncomfortable, but we've got to talk about it honestly. All right, and see where it goes from there. Eva Patterson with the Equal Justice Society. Thank you. Thank you for having me.